Um, okay, so I wanted to talk for just a couple of minutes. I'm going to make it very fast. You all know I can talk very fast when I need to. So I'm going to make it very fast, but I want to talk about overcoming adversity. Um, and the reason why I want to talk about that is because <laughs> life, <laughs> if we sit around waiting for life to get better, we're going to miss out on so many things. And there are so many people right now that are struggling with things. Um, maybe they're coming back from struggling with things. So they're doing better, but they've had struggles in their past that sometimes overshadow them when they're trying to hit those big goals. And that's why learning how to overcome adversity is one of the most important life skills that we can have. And it's one of the most important life and business skills that we can have. Because in this business, you will have adverse times. There's no two ways about it. If you're here for more than a year, at some point, you will have adverse times. Whether the adversity is coming from the outside in or if it's coming from the inside out. Whether the adversity is the struggles that you're having, dating the parties, recruiting people, motivating people, doing things like that, or the adversity that you're having is outside sources coming in. It's family struggles. It's things like that, pulling your attention away and pulling your focus away. So I wanted to give you some quick tips on how to overcome adversity. And one of the things um, that I want to talk about is um, adversity is one of life's greatest teachers, if you let it be. And that's one of the most important things is, you know, is learning from every situation and, and realizing that it is a gift, you know, and, and I, I cannot even, I remember my first boyfriend was pretty crappy, right? And I remember my friends like, I can't believe you wasted two years with that loser. And I was like, it wasn't a waste. I learned what I don't want. Like, <laughs> you know, that was about it. <laughs> I learned a lot of what I don't want till I met Eric. I felt, I feel like I could have just handed him a list. Like, this is what I will and will not tolerate in a relationship. <laughs> are you in or are you out? <laughs> you know, and that's just kind of, and, but that right there is letting the adversity teach me. And so, um, so number one is you want to be prepared. We never know when adverse times are going to hit, right? And let's look at finances. Um, I follow Dave Ramsey and things like that. And he's always talking about like, you know, just preparing yourself for that storm. You don't know when it's coming, right? Whether it's finances or it's mental strength that you're trying to like, get secure because you never know when that wave is coming and you have to be prepared to withstand it. And I love the analogy of the wave. How many of you grew up going to the beach? My family's from the South. And so at least one of our vacations every year was a beach vacation. It's still my favorite place in the world to be is a beach. And, um, and I just, I, I used to love to jump the waves. I used to go out and I'd love to lean in and just crush into the waves as hard as they would crush into me. And sometimes I was standing afterwards and sometimes I got completely wiped out and sucked down the beach, right? You know, because I was little. And so that's adversity. That's a perfect example of when adversity hits, are you strong enough to crush into the waves and still remain standing? Or are you going to be washed away with the waves? When you're not mentally strong, when you're not physically, financially, spiritually, whatever prepared for that adversity to come, it can wipe you out. And that's why it's so important to always be working on those things. And so there are people when COVID hit and all those changes happened, they got wiped out because they're like, I don't like change. Yeah, you know what? Not many people do like change, okay? But just because you don't like it doesn't mean you should avoid it because by doing something that you don't like, it just strengthens you right? And so people that avoided change all this time, oh, I don't like change. I don't like change. And there's backing away. I don't like change. I don't like change, right? Their whole lives because some of it is where somebody told them change is bad. And they're like, oh, I don't like change. I don't like change. If they didn't take that time and practice change on these little things, when the biggest change probably in the history of definitely our lifespan, right? <laughs> happened. They got wiped out because they were, they were, yes, Heather, I'm scared of change. Yes. Lots of people are scared of change and, 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 but you still have to, have to practice those baby steps of change so that when a big change happens, it doesn't wipe you out. It may kind of like shake you up, right? It's like being a snow globe, right? <laughs> but you're still standing. All right. So being prepared, working on overcoming adversity happens before the tough situation, right? <laughs> Lots of shake. 
<laughs> when, when the time comes to dig deep and uncover how to overcome adversity, you will be prepared because of all those little things that you have overcome that maybe you didn't even look at it as an overcoming. But if you think about it, every day we overcome things every day sometimes sometimes just simply overcoming our own mood for the day am i right i mean we we'll, sometimes we all wake up with that like cloud over our head and we're like okay i can either just continue on walking through this day and letting it suck or <laughs> i can try to pivot and make some changes to make myself happy and so yeah <laughs> Pam, I've called Pam on those days and she's just like, okay, starting right here, right now. It's a new day starting right here, right now. And so, yes, yeah, a do over a mulligan for all my golfing friends. Right. And so like so many times I sit there and I'm just like, I'll turn around like, okay, actually. So we do this thing sometimes as a leadership thing. And you're just like, you turn around and you're like, okay, it's a new day, right? <laughs> Let's start over. Let's go again. You're turning over a new lead. So it's really important. Yes. You have to hit the reset button. For a long time, my reset button was going to my parents' house. When I would start to feel like life was starting to like wash over me, I'm like, I need my touchstone, right? I needed to go back to my parents' house. I just need to be there. I need to breathe. And then I was ready. I was like, okay, I can do it. I can do, I can do hard things, right? And then when that got taken away, I had to figure out that new place. So what is that place for you? And maybe it's a place you can go to in your mind. Maybe it's a place you can physically go to right? Um, but figure out what that is so you can tap into it. And it's like a switch, right? Number two is practice positivity. How does a person overcome adversity? Through mindset, work, and practice. You have to practice it daily. And it's not always easy, right? Because <laughs> sometimes, again, life sucks. And you're just like, I don't feel like being positive right now. <laughs> I'm positive that I don't want to be positive, <laughs> you know? And so, but it's important to just kind of allow yourself to have that moment, but make it a moment. Don't make it a day. Don't make it a, a season. Don't forget. Don't make it a week. I heard, I saw, read your lips, Robin. Don't, she said a week. No, not a week. That's too long. All right. Make it a moment. Make it a moment and just move forward. And if you're struggling with that, tap into the positive people in your life and let them do it. Yes, yeah, sometimes it is very hard to be positive, Heather. I completely agree with you. And, um, and, and it's so important to tune out that negativity and tap into the positivity, whatever that is for you. And so, um, and so with the more you shift towards uh, the positive mindset, the more equipped you'll be to overcome that adversity. Number three is to stay disciplined. When tough times hit, it can feel like life is out of control. Yes, yes, and yes, right? <laughs> yes, I think we all feel that way. But one of the best things you can do is stick to a routine, is to just really, and so what I, I refer to it as is I put my blinders on. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do my work right now because all this crazy stuff's going on over here and I need to concentrate on my work right here. I'm just going to focus on this little point right here. Like, and that's all I can really do. And I will, I'll just put my blinders on like, oh, don't talk to me. Nobody look at me. I just need to get my work done. Like, because I can control that. I can't control this nonsense. I can't control any of those things. It's so important to do that. Stay focused. Getting what you want in life is all about focus. It truly is. I was watching my daughter play tennis the other day and she, I watched her lose her focus in the middle of a match. And I was like, where'd she go? I'm like, it's missing. So afterwards I said, yeah, I saw you lose your focus. And I started wondering what you had, you had lost your focus on. And she goes, I started thinking about homework. And I was thinking about this teacher that I always think about. And she's just like, I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> Yes, they focused, you know, and she's like, yeah, I got it back. And she did. I could visibly see when it came back. And it's so we do the same thing, right? Talking about scrolling. Oh, there's a notification. I'm going to click on that. It's a shiny thing. There's something dinging. I'm like, I go, let's see what it is, right? We all do it, but we have to stay focused. Visualize, visualize your life being focused. Visualize that razor focus. Stay focused on your ultimate goal, no matter what. Destructive thinking will only get in your way when you're when you're learning how to overcome adversity. So it's so important to stay focused on that. Find the lesson. Realize that life happens for you. And that is such a hard lesson 
to realize life doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. It's teaching you something. And I remember at one point we were going through our hardest time and I was wondering, I was like, why is this still happening? Like, why are we still struggling with this same stuff we've been struggling with for years? And I've been doing all the right things. And I've been putting the work in. And I don't understand why it's still happening. And I remember talking to my dad and, and I was just like, I feel like maybe we haven't learned our lesson yet. And he just kind of was like, what do you mean? And I said, well, clearly God is trying to teach us something or he would have plucked us out of this situation. <laughs> like, I'm just like, come on. Like, <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, I get that. And I was like, so I think I just need to open my eyes and try and figure out what that lesson is. So coming up with a plan or establishing a process to prevent it from happening in the future so you can move on. Um, so Steve Jobs says, it's best to admit, admit your mistakes quickly and get on with improving and, and getting on to other innovations, right? All right, so number six is, six is work on your skills. Overcoming adversity is all about taking an honest look at your knowledge and skills and acknowledging your shortcomings and working to improve them every day. In addition to the skills that tie directly with your professional um, your profession or goal, work on other things that will benefit you no matter what your goal is. That's personal. That's, that's like self-help, right? That's this stuff like this. That's like vision stuff. That's like you know, um, be motivated, all that kind of good stuff, right? Um, learning from others. Think of other people you know who you admire and ask them how they got there and hear their stories. Hear their stories. That there's so much to learn in other people's stories and other people's journeys. I love watching interviews with people when they're actually like kind of digging deep and they're just telling about their childhood and they're telling about things like that. Um, Elevate your peer group. Surround yourself with people who also want to grow. Period. Like, I mean, that is so huge. And in the beginning, it was so hard to do because I didn't know those people that wanted to grow like I wanted to grow. That wasn't in my circle of friends. And I didn't know those people. And then through Tupperware, I met those people. But, and, but it took time to cultivate the relationships that I had so that I could consider them my circle and I consider them the people that I could tap into right and so it takes time but I would in, I would intentionally put myself in situations like jubilee right like going to jubilee and spending that kind of time with these people so I could get these bonds and have these experiments right it, or experiments not experiments <laughs> experiences <laughs> we're not experimenting with anything we're just having experiences <laughs> you know, dancing on the floor with uh, Michaela and Amy and Jessica and everybody and you like, I mean, that thing, that was such a fun experience. And I didn't even know some of those people, you know, or I bare, didn't know them like that, you know, some of the people that we were dancing with and hanging out with, and it was just such a fun experience. And that's what's happened at all the Jubilees and the leadership summits. And, and anytime that we're able to get together, it really is a bonding experience. Yes, Dawn, Dawn's on here. I was wondering if Dawn was on. Dawn, we'd never met Dawn and there she was in real life it is so cool you know and that's how you kind of get that circle um get a coach okay so one of the hardest times in our life i could see it coming um i didn't know it was actually i didn't know it was coming like in a month right but i thought it was coming in a couple of years and i was like i can see life is about to get a little weird and I, I think I need to get somebody to stay, keep me focused. And so I got myself a coach. You have coaches here. You have your uplines, right? You have your upline director who I'm not sure there's a single upline director at Champion that wouldn't be willing to coach somebody that's wanting to be coached. There's no, no two ways about it. Raise your hands. Let them know that you're there. You know, I'm consistently, I have a coach outside of Tupperware, but I also am coached in Tupperware. I'm coached, I have a friend and we actually coach each other. I have Pam, I have Pam, we all have Pam, right? I mean, I just text her, I'm like, help, I need help today. <laughs> and she will take the time and talk me down off the ledge, right? Um, and so it's so important to have somebody that will hold you accountable um, in, a good, in a good way, right? And give them that permission to do that. Yep, Jessica is your coach. Yep, you got it. Um, I know she's your coach because I coach her. So I know that she works with each other. <laughs> See, I know all those little things. <laughs> well, at least for the people in my art. <laughs> all right, so don't give up. Last but certainly not least, don't give up. Don't give up. I know, I miss her too. They have been gone only like, what, five days? And I miss all of them. <laughs> 
<laughs> you guys are stuck here with me. All right, so don't, don't give up. Persistence overshadows talent as the most valuable resource shaping your quality of life. Persistence, persistence. Persistence is how you get consistent, right? And it's so important to be like a dog with a bone when it comes to going after your goals and going after what you truly, truly want and need out of this business and out of your life. Because we got one shot, guys, one shot at this, as far as we know. Okay, we have one shot. So we've got to make it count. We don't want it to be this, this lackluster experience. We don't want to just be, you know, putting one foot in front of the other for our whole lives. It's sometimes you have to do that. You're walking around in days because you just got side swiped by life and you got a, you, you, something hit you that you weren't expecting. And yes, in those moments, you have to put one foot in front of the other in your numbed state. However, that's not a way to live. That's not a way to live a life. And so it's so important to not give up. It's important to pivot if things aren't going the way that you're wanting them to go. It's important to confide in that person that you trust to help keep you on track. It's important to, to, to confide in them how you're feeling and say, what should I do? Which direction should I go? And sometimes it's a, a how-to and sometimes it's more of a, you know, let's work on all of this together, right? And so it's so important because adversity happens to everyone, but it doesn't need to derail our lives. And learning how to overcome adversity is a life skill that everyone must master. And it's sad, but there have been plenty of times I've been walking around the store. I've been walking around anywhere and you see a lot of people. I just worked a fair, so you get lots of people watching there. But you can see the people that have just kind of like given up. You know, they're just kind of like, this is life. I'm here. I'm not crazy about it. No, that is not you, Robin. I refuse to let that be you. <laughs> but seriously, I mean, that's not why we're here. And so um, there's a song. Um, and when I was going through like one of like a, a tough time, I remember this song and we we're actually on our way, I think to like a Disney trip or something. I don't know. We were getting in the car. It was like two in the morning and the whole family was in the car and we're driving because we used to drive and the kids were little. So they'd sleep most of the way. Which I never did because they're always so excited. It always sounds like a great idea, but it never works. But anyways, so, <laughs> but there's, a, and it's an older song and, and it's, called meant for more. And I think about this song all the time and it just speaks to my core because I truly believe I I'm here for a reason. I am meant for so much more, more than I can even fathom. And there's a speaker, his name's Dean Graciosi. I listened to him this past week. I've been listening to his training for years, but this past week I was listening to him and he was like, what if you get to heaven and God shows you like a video of what you could have done? Like, what would that look like? Like what you could have done if you really went for it. And if you didn't give up and if you didn't do those things. And I was like, Oh, like that's tough. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I'm like, that's, that's a little rough, but I remember thinking, uh, yeah, talk about regret. Yeah. And I remember thinking, um, when I was early on in my business, when I get scared and I'm like, I don't want to do that. What are people going to think? Oh, and I go into that weird place in my brain and I'm like, ah, everybody's talking about me and thinking about me. And then I realized like, nobody's talking about me. Nobody's thinking about me. And that's not that important to, you know, except for my, like the people that are important to, but like everybody that I was so worried about what they thought about, I'm like, they're not thinking about me. They're not even, they don't, they're not even paying attention to me. And I was just like, so who cares what they think? And then I would ask myself, would I pay myself, would I, would I do this job if somebody was going to pay me six figures? And it was like making phone calls, like <laughs> trying to date parties. And I was like, yeah. And so I would date the party. I would get on the phone and then I would like, well, and then I was like, well, I don't, I don't want to ask this person about joining my team because what if they think it's weird? And there's think I'm one of those people that's always asking people to join their team. And then I was just like, okay, well, if somebody offered me six figures, cause that was always my goal. If somebody offered me six figures, would I have that conversation? I'm like, mm, yeah, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> 
yes the answer is always yes and so that's why i just kept putting one foot in front of the other one foot in front of the other creating the life that i wanted creating the business that i wanted creating the paycheck that i wanted creating the date book i wanted creating the connections that i wanted you know and then it just became this right it became this because i wasn't this before tupperware I was a mom, which I am now, but I was a mom, messy hair and just getting by, right? Most time wearing my give up on life pants, right? <laughs> Elastic waist, like I don't care <laughs> type of a situation. And, and it's important that, you know, to realize like that if that's what you want to be, that's okay. But that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted so much more. I wanted to model that for my kids and my family and everybody that I love. And that's what we have the ability to give people. And that's what we have the ability to do here. And so I want to encourage you to overcome that adversity, whatever it is and whatever might be coming our way, <laughs> whether it's like a Tupperware thing or whether it's like a life thing or whether it's just, you know, nobody wants to stay parties with me thing, <laughs> you know? We can do this. We can do hard things, especially when we stick together. And so that's what I want to encourage you. When that stuff happens, talk, talk to your upline, you know, not complain, talk, right? And say, I have this problem and I got to figure out a way to solve it. Not just like, I have this problem and I hate this and I hate this and I hate this and I hate this. <laughs> that's not going to work, <laughs> you know, but just really come at, with the idea of trying to solve the problem. Let's solve the problem. Do you want to complain about the problem? Let's solve the problem, you know? And so we can do that together.